What's up, family? Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you had a good week and you and your family are healthy and staying safe. Today, we're going to be rapping about the battle. And on the grill, we got beef. We got beef today on the grill. And I love setting up every show with a quote that sort of lays the groundwork and it just makes it a wonderful conversation. So here's the quote. Sometimes I try to do good, but I just can't be. It's hard to get myself to do things that ain't me. And that quote comes from any caption. And I think that that sets us up nicely to talk, express, relate, connect with our special guest. Y'all ain't ready. Sparky D is in the backyard. What's up, yeah. fam? Hey, what's up, family? Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm in the backyard and the beef is on the grill. Yes. Y'all know what it is. Yes. It ain't nobody I, I would rather talk beef with than the one that knows how to serve it, season it, and make folks eat it. So you Absolutely. are that one. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm so happy to have you queen in the building. So oh. what you been up to? Woo, long journey. Uh, actually, what I've been up to, being a mom, you mm -hmm. know, becoming a pastor, you know, uh, oh, no, no, no. The <laughs> devil is a liar. I'm telling you <laughs> what is going on. I'm like, no, I have to do this interview. Again, I am sorry, fam out there. I'm sorry who's watching, Holly. Mm, I'm just so sorry. But anyway, I've really been busy being a pastor, mm -hmm. um, becoming an apostle, being a mom, you know, um, doing my ministry, just doing a lot of different things. My fragrance line. Now I'm film, filming my docu-series. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, filming Sparky D, it's like, ugh. You know, my phone is ringing off the hook. So we're just doing a lot of different things. Just doing a lot of different things. Well, that's good to hear. That is really good to hear because, like I said, we got to keep moving regardless. Regardless right. of what's going on, we got to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. So yes, I'm do. glad you got that part going. So I know about your amazing history, but our audience doesn't. So tell us a little bit about how you got in this hip hop game. Fine. Uh, I was uh, born and raised in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Uh, the first group I was in was called the Playgirls. Okay. And that consisted of Moski, City Slim, and myself. We came out the Van Dyke Projects in Brownsville. And our motto was uh, 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 never ran, never will. You know what I mean? And um, where we grew up at, Brownsville is no joke. You can Google it now. It is the worst. It was one of the worst. And um, we just began rapping in the hallways. You know, our, uh, uh, may he rest in peace. Marky D. We were babies. Yeah. We all used to practice in each other's homes and hitting on the walls, you know, in the projects. And we became rappers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, playing music in the park. You know, and us singing, it's on and on and on and on, you know. And, you know, just um, being at the right place at the right time in New York with Russell Simmons mm -hmm. and uh, meeting Spider D, we became the Playgirls, you know, um, old school um, legend, um, MC Spider D. He took on the Playgirls. And I told the Playgirls, look, don't be, don't, don't act like you like him because he got that song out, Smurfy's Dance. Well, look, I, I, I wind up being with him. You so know, that ended up being, being your with, dude. Yes, yes, he became my dude, and I have two children. So um, God is good. And that's how I became Sparky D, meeting Spider D, being at the right place at the right time with the Playgirls. Right, right. And that what was that phrase that you said that the um, the Playgirls had, never did it, never will, or what oh, was it? Oh, never ran, never will. Never ran, never, ran, never, never will. will. What does that mean? I mean, I got my own translation of what it would mean to me, but what did it really mean? Never I'm ran, honest, never I'm will. From Brownsville, we from Brownsville. Never. I am so sorry on this interview that people are calling me. Um, 
It, it, it meant I'm, we from Brownsville. Never ran, never will. That was our motto. Meaning, nigga, you can come with anything. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. We ain't moving. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, that, and and we literally go by that even now at our older age. Everybody in Brownsville, Mike Tyson, never ran, never, never will. Never will. You know what I'm saying? And that's what helped his character being Mike Tyson. Brownsville. Yeah. Dirty gutter. The gutter. Wow. Wow. I didn't know it was that deep. But what was going on at the time, like in Brownsville and stuff, when, when you and the Playgirls and all of that, when all of that was coming together, what was happening there? Was it uh, a gang violence, smoke. poverty? What was going on at the time? You know, we had, pro it was projects, so it was poverty, but we wasn't, you know, I, I'm not, we wasn't like, uh, well, it was poverty, okay? But it wasn't like we didn't eat or we didn't go without. It was the right. projects. Uh, 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 niggas from Brownsville didn't play. They was on Sutter Avenue. They was hustling. You know what I'm saying? They was getting that money. We were running down 14 flights of stairs, stepping over dead bodies. You know what I'm saying? Number runners is knocking on our mother's door, getting the numbers, yeah. uh, um, hustling, uh, uh, by any means necessary, um, trying to eat. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm -hmm. what Brownsville was. We'll take yours. You come in, but you may not go out. You know, and, right. and we lived it, you know, um, I'm not proud of it, but that's, you know, we were raised like that, you know, um, that's just how it was, sis, you know, in Brownsville, yeah. you know, you may go in, but you may not come out. And um, that, um, I guess, helped build my character, you know, because my mother was white, my father was black. So I didn't have no aunts, uncles and cousins. So I had to take to the street as my family. Right. So that's what brought on that, um, I mean, played the part of the the oomph that I had, the mm -hmm. um tenacity that I have, you know, the character because that made me a battle rapper, you know, get me. This is what I want. I take what I want when I want. Right. Right. So that's the mentality that I had. But you know, now that I know I was born with it, you know what I'm saying? It was the anointing. It was God. But back then I thought I, you know, I had this swizzle, you know, like MC Shan say, you know. Yeah. Um, shout out to MC Shan. That's yeah, my dude. Yes, 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 definitely. And but, um, Jeff from BTP Media. That's my dude too. Yes, who hooked us up, yes. Sparky. I mean, I really appreciate Jeff. He's been getting me you know, some really great, great giants, you know, that's Amen. helping tell this mm -hmm. story. And you're one of them. And um, speaking of such, I wanted to find out how did you and UTFO get together? Was y'all homies or how did that whole thing well, hook up? Well, I'm going to be very honest with you. When you live in Brooklyn, you're already connected. Okay. I don't have to know you to stand up for you. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? But I knew UTF because we were all teenagers trying to be rappers, you know, trying to become stars. But Roxanne Shante, shout out to Roshani in the building, Shane in the building. But if I'm in the building, she's there. So shout out to Roxanne Shante. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can speak on her behalf. Uh, you know, not knowing UTFO so close, but we we we're, were born and raised in Brooklyn. So if you talk about Brooklyn, I gotta stand up for Brooklyn. Right. You got this young girl talking about UTFO and she out of Queens with a cracky wacky voice. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yo, how dare you even speak about my brothers? We from Brooklyn, so I gotta stand up for Brooklyn. At least I thought I, you know, I was supposed to stand up for him. So that's what had happened. Okay. So when um when it Mr. Magic played it on a uh, Mr. Magic rap attack. You know, she had a funny voice, but it was it was unique. You know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. catchy. And um, she talked about UTFO. So I just stood up for the boys from Brooklyn. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you know, I was going to broke, broke out from there. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you that because it just seemed like, you know, they didn't want to really do the beef. You know, because uh -huh. back then, at least, there was a little respect from between a man and a woman as far as yeah, them yeah, not yeah. getting no, in your face guys. publicly. They good guys. They good guys. Yeah. So they knew that, you know, we're going to let sis handle it and y'all can go ahead and do y'all thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, you being one of the first, along with Ro Roxanne Shante, one of the first female battle rappers, you right. know, to come in this game. How did you get that title? What was that journey that you did in order to be like, look, these two are capable and necessary to do this battle so that everybody well, can see what's up. 
I'm going to be very honest with you and not bragging or boasting. I never rehearsed a practice in my life. Uh -huh. And neither did Shani. Neither did Shani. We were born with it. We live with this. We can do this. Even after dropping a hat at 55, at 55, and she's she's 50. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. This is what we do. We live and we breathe this. It is our character. We command the crowd. Where somebody else got to practice to sound like us. Somebody else got to do the same steps as us. We just come out and we just set it straight. There's no answer for that. And I, I'm not going to try to find one. That's how how we are we live for, we live for this we were born for this and this is how we do this right and i could tell from the way you lay in your caves right now if you want some of this you can get some of this you can be some of this we, you know what i mean yeah yeah you Come just saw it. your Come role if you want it yeah you know yeah but, um, we were born like you know we hey we were just fortunate to be one of the ladies that we didn't have to rehearse we didn't rehearse yeah. i never rehearsed with cool gj red alert i don't know just hey you do this do that do that and it's done yeah, yeah. Because you know. it seemed like you got a lot of lyrics in your mind. You know what I'm saying? To whereas, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're already, you know, loaded up in the shotgun. They just roll out, you know. So, you know what? I think, Sparky D, that this sets us up nicely to go to the grill. Let's go to the grill. Let's go to the grill. We need to talk about beef. You know, I wanted to talk to somebody that knows about real beef. Cause when, when you and Roxanne Shantae was together, y'all had beef, but y'all knew how to put it on the grill together, season it and eat it together. I want to talk about like the beef then and how you guys were able to work it through versus the beef. Now it just seems like we just can't seem to work it through. So, you know, in the beginning, sis. You know, uh -huh. We couldn't work nothing through. You hear me? We couldn't get on the grill together. You feel me? We yeah. Couldn't, um, she didn't like me, and I like her. Um, okay. She was from Queens. I was from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and we didn't even know what the what, what the hell we were doing. But she lived in Queens, so that was her borough. Mine was Brooklyn. Um, her DJ was Molly Mall from WBLS. Mine was Cool DJ Red Alert from Kiss. They even start started not liking each other. Radios were going against each other. Burrows was going against each other because you have these two little girls going against you know each other. But Mr. Magic, I never forget when we um uh, uh, performed live together at, uh -huh. at the arena in North Carolina. It was so big. We sold out as little girls. They were like Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. You know what I'm saying? That's what they looked at us as, as um we were and um. Mr. Magic said, look, at the end of the game, Magic Johnson and the Lakers and Larry Bird, you know, from Boston. Right. At the end of the day, they'll have a drink when it's all over with. Mm -hmm. Y'all have to learn to come together. So it was Mr. Magic that brought us together. But if, other than that, we were like cats and dogs at each other. You wow. know, we had the whole New York boroughs going against each other. Who likes Sparky? Who likes Roxanne? Mm -hmm. But we, we we found we we found that medium. You know what I'm saying? With Mr. Magic, look, y'all need to be from there. It was a little. So that's her. You know, when I come on, you know, we were right. still rivals. But but at the end of the day, we found. You know, we became sisters. You know, like that mm -hmm. part in a movie when we were on. She was on tour. We were on tour together, and. I got paid from the tour because I took mine. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and 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 she was outside crying. You know, the whole movie didn't show that, but she was outside crying. And I just looked at Mo Ski and I said, yo, what she over there crying for? So I went to her. I mm -hmm. said, um, I know we don't talk, but what you crying for? Why are you sitting here crying? Right. She said, I didn't get paid from the tour and I got a baby and I got to buy Pampers. And I gave her about 1500 Mm -hmm. And I say, here at the end of the day, we still sisters, and 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 she never forgotten that. She said, "I promise you, I would dance at your wedding." Well, come to find out, uh, thirty years later, she hosts my wedding. Wow, you know wow. what I'm saying? She hosts yeah. my fiftieth birthday party. We became sisters, you know. And mm -hmm. even when they found out that she wasn't a doctor. You know, I was the one that ministered to her and uplift her and encourage her. But she had to be special because who in the hell would think to study a doctor and go to college, uh, college and speak on it? So she was, she, I, I mean, I'm her biggest fan, man. You know, mm -hmm. and it got nothing to do with Roxanne Shante. Just, I mean, the battle. Just the person yeah. that she is. You right. know, so so I'm telling you, sis, we got story for days and the backyard on the grill won't be able to hold. It. Yes, indeed. And it's just like the thing that I really like, because, you know, the most difficult beasts 
to get settled are the ones between the females, you know, because we can just go levels, you know, level to mm -hmm. level to level. Yeah. And we're, as young girls growing up, we're just, women are pitted against each other, period. Yes, we were. And you don't yes, even we know why initially. We didn't know. know. We, we didn't know, you know, and we wondered why everybody is, you know, looking at, they want us to do this and do that. And they were, actually, they loved us, but they were using us as well, you know, so. Yeah. To make a long story short, we came together as sisters some couple years down the line. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We understand what it is to go on stage now amongst each other. Yes. I won't even dare sing it. You know, um, it, it, it gets rough. You know, it gets rough even now. But um, I truly believe in my heart other women learned from us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They got so much from us, but they're not willing to admit that. Because you had to start from somewhere. You know, before there was... Um, a uh, Cardi B, there was a Roxanne Shante. Before right. there was a Nicki Minaj, there was a Sparky D. You know, right. and um, but to God be the glory, we good, we did it. You know, and we keep it moving, and we cheer on for the rest of the females. We ain't mad at nobody. Right, right, and so, I mean, but we still, but we still, you, you know, we, we're still willing and able. You know, our microphones is on. We keep our microphones on. I you know, know that's right. Yeah, I know, know that's so, right. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted of age because we're ready. Who would you battle. say you ready? Ready for battle? Yeah, well, give me a battle rap right now. You in the car? Give me something. Battle yeah, with me, Sparky. He is in the house. No introduction needed. So the rap game, I could you act? Cause he, I gave you rap battles with my girl Rock Shante before any biz mark a kid in play like Run DMC. I made you walk that way. Pete the Pig, Bop and L, Jam Master J, Old School Flow. You know that's me. I'm the S P A R K Y D. And if you're in the industry, you know that's me. Big up to my peeps in the NYC. Been doing my thing since Murphy's clapping. If it wasn't for that, the game record was whack. Who put it down for you, young school cats? Back in the days, we didn't do it like that. Old school cats break bread with one another. New school cats can't stand each other. Facts, 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 facts. I mean, I, I love that, that line. Grill. Put it's so on, on the grill. It's so on the grill. Sizzle for me, grill, because that was delicious. <laughs> I feel like we really worked that up. I really want to ask you another question, too, by you being mixed, like your mom um, was white and your dad black, and yes. Roxanne Shantae being, you know, a dark girl. Right. Did you guys have that interracial thing? Like, did people try to pitch you guys because you was light-skinned and, yeah, and she yeah, wasn't? yeah. yeah. Yeah, Give me you know, a little um, bit about how bad, that was. Yeah. You know, I can I can speak on her behalf. You know, mm -hmm. that's my sister. It was bad for her because she was dark. You know, they wanted the real Roxanne because she was Puerto Rican with red hair and she was pretty. You know what I'm saying? So, right. so I, I have to, I can speak on Shawnee's part. It was very rough for her, you know, because she was dark skin and I was light skin. I had green eyes. But then you had the dark skin crew that was cheering for her too. You know what I'm right. saying? But um, it was very rough for us growing up as young girls in this entertainment business, but we held our own. We're still here and well enough to manage our own damn selves at this time and getting paper. Yeah, yeah, and that's the big thing. But, you know, like I said, I wanted to speak to you specifically about beef, and we can really sit and talk all day about it because there's just levels and levels and levels. Yes, it is levels to it. But I mainly wanted to speak to you because I wanted the audience to know that... Even when you have beef, you got to work it out. You got to put your grown man hat on, your grown yes, you woman glasses Girls on, purse on. on. Yeah, and get this stuff right because beef ain't meant to last. It's meant to season it and grill it, and y'all need to eat it together. So together. let's start it eating it together and start uh, instead of not being able to even sit at the same table together and talk. That's you know. right. Let's love on each other. You know, yeah. it's okay. Like Mr. Magic said, rest in peace. Go play a game and then have a drink, y'all. Yeah. No what you drink and then go have a drink. Just love on each other. Know that it, it, it's entertainment. You're building. It's for other people to yeah. see. It's not to kill each other. You know what I'm saying? Love each other. Uh, be wise in all that you do. Ah, Jesus. Yes, indeed. Christ. And we got to forgive each other. You know what I'm yes, saying? We, we really do. You know, and with that, you know what, Sparky D, I think we did that beef. Take it off the grill. We did that Ooh. beef. I love that because, you know, it's, it's simple and plain. Quit playing yes, with it. it. Quit playing yes, with it. it. So let's get back to the questions. 
when you was coming up like in the 1980s, it was a novelty to have a novelty to have two artists come together to even think about doing right. a rap album. And you and Roxanne Shante was very successful in doing that with round one. So how did round one come together? Whose idea was it to put you two great lyricists against each other and, and market it and put out a record and an album? Oh, it was Spidey D and Molly Mall, and we it wasn't on my record label, Nia Records. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I ever was in the studio with her, and we were just becoming friends. We weren't really friends. And what got me was that we went into the studio, mm -hmm. and Spider D, which was my boyfriend, my producer, my manager, um, did not want me to curse. He didn't want me to have that um, that kind of career. He didn't want me to be known for cursing. He okay. said, do not curse. Mm -hmm. And I didn't curse. And I believe that's how she got over on me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because, and then when I went to rap and they said, oh, that's it. And then they'll let her just keep going on the album. You made mm -hmm. me mad. You got me started. I'll cold bug out and get retarded. You know, she just went crazy. But you could tell she was mad because she was out of breath. <laughs> you you well, can always tell when you when you became winded. That's for sure. Yeah, you know. But wow. um, we did that. Um, we still wasn't close. We were just, I guess, playing each other like we like each other. Mm -hmm. But we wasn't close at all. It was rough for us. But at the end of the day, we became sisters. We love on each other. We we stay in prayer with each other. Actually, mm -hmm. we're doing a conference. It's called Bigger. Mm -hmm. to better to break through no bitter to better to break through and wow. we're working on a conference now roxanne shante and sparky apostle sparky d mending shit mending all walks of life together mm -hmm. so look at this two females that started a battle that almost killed each other that ha had burrows going crazy now we're mending all walks of life together in the conference bitter to better to break through so there you have it you know you learn when you know better, you do better. So now we're doing better for each and everybody in the world. We're mending um, relationships together. Wow. And that's going to be great for us to see. So I'm going oh, no, to make sure. No, oh, you okay. Have to come. You have I'm to coming come. then. I got to do some interviews in the hallway, uh, uh, in the backyard. You have to come. Yeah. yeah I'll be there with my mic and headphones like, hello, that's hello, right. hello. <laughs> in the backyard. <laughs> So, you know, let's talk about your book. I mean, okay. from the pit to the palace, yes. Re restructure, rebuild, restore. Why was it so important for you to write this book? Oh, boy, uh, my journey. 17, after becoming, you know, who God allowed me to be, Sparky D, I mm -hmm. had a downfall. 17 years of crack cocaine, prostitution, domestic violence, and homelessness. Mm -hmm. You know, coming from Brownsville, having that swag, um, um, selling the drugs. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. Making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a day in drugs, um, but smoking at the same time. I, you know, I, I started smoking crack, and I was on crack for seventeen years, mm -hmm. and um, been through domestic violence and homelessness, and and it it just been a rough path for me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? A rough journey, but um, through through the grace of God, I'm here to talk about it. Um, I wrote the book, you know, my first book. I have three other books that's ready to come out. They're coming out this year, 2021. And um, just just, just enjoying your life. You know, it was a rough journey for me, so I wrote the book so mm -hmm. other people can um, get something from it, you know, because, you know, sometimes God allow you to go through these things for somebody else. It wasn't even for me, but I had to go through that for somebody else. And now somebody is going through that journey, and I am here to help them pull them out. You know, so I had to go through this um, for somebody else, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I love the title, you know, from the pit to the palace, you know, because we all start somewhere and we all mm -hmm. find ourselves in a pit at right. one point or another. You but know, you know, excuse me, you know, the palace is not tangible things. The palace is not a big old mansion. The palace is just my insanity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 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 Going back to that little girl that my mother once raised, just just finding me. That is the palace, just finding me. Yes, yes. And it's that simple because mm -hmm. oftentimes we look for everything else except for what our peace is, what is going yeah. to make me feel good and calm, mm -hmm. you know, throughout my life and be able to approach each thing with that peace. Right. And I mean, through your book, it really, I mean, it's, you're all in it. 
you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, mm -hmm. I can create my own picture from the right. great words that you put together. Mm -hmm. And it's just so, so real and raw, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of how much you reveal in the honesty yes. and in the realness that the, the steps that you went through to right. regain that peace, to regain that palace. And I mean, when, when I thought from the pit to the palace, I thought about Joseph in the yes. Bible. Wow, you're gonna make me cry because my brother- Well, let's cry deathbed. together. <laughs> my brother was on his deathbed and he said, oh, and he couldn't talk. He said, but always remember this. You wear the robe of Joseph of many colors. Yeah. And it was a long journey for me. You know, I had to learn, you know, um, I had to learn a whole lot. I wrote that years ago, um, learning where periods was, learning where the question marks go. You know, I, I lost it all, you know. Yeah. Um, I will always, I look at that book and I laugh. You know what I mean? I laugh because I didn't even know how to write the content. I didn't know how to do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I had to get it out. You know, I had to heal myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and now I cry. I, I just thank thank God that um it's not um tears of sadness, it's tears of joy. I can laugh now, you know, and say, Oh yeah. God, that book. But it was a long journey. And now um uh, my docuseries will show you my journey. Um, I thank God that um I'm in my right state of mind, sis. Yeah. You know, I used to call cool DJ Red Alert when Queen Latifah came out. I used mm -hmm. to say, How does she look? Ooh, could, could, could. Her, her stage presence better than mine and even Eve you know what I mean yeah. I love some Queen Latifah and some Eve and I never gotten to meet them but I know I will you know what I mean yes so, you will so, yeah, yeah man and you know what the, the thing that I love most about it you're just so honest you know and like that's the only way that we can grow from one another because you showing how much you care and love somebody else through loving yourself is what really is making this conversation that you and I have a whole lot more than I ever thought it would be. And um, I'm just so thankful for that. So I'm telling you, I mean, dry your eyes for a minute. Cause I know, <laughs> I know you sitting here <laughs> drying your eyes for a minute, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's just been really, really great talking to you besides everything, you know, um, it's just so meaningful and mindful right now. What's up, family? Me and Sparky D, we got disconnected. I mean, and of course, we were on a very emotional topic. So she's going to come back on the show, and her and I are going to dwell more deeply into an amazing book, From the Pit to the Palace. But when I tell you, man, Sparky D is a real one, and I'm just so, so happy to be able to have the opportunity to talk to her today. So let's go back to our quote. I try to do good, but I just can't be. It's hard to get myself to do things that ain't me. And that sums up the great conversation I had today with Sparky D because you can't do what ain't you. So remember that moving forward. Thanks so much, you guys, for tuning in to Rappers in My Backyard. We keep it lit back here, I tell you. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel hit that bell. That's how you're going to find out about new videos. And when we post them, check out our website at www.rappersinmybackyard.com. Sign up for the newsletter and come kick it with us there. And again, I like to say special thanks to my girl, the one, the only, the best battle rapper ever. And Roxanne Shante is too, cause I love them both. I like to say thank you for spending your gift with me and your day with me. And for you guys, I can't wait to talk express, relate, connect with you guys next week. Stay safe and we love you guys. We're out. Bye.